Uh, thanks for staying with us uh, on Sunrise Daily this morning. Well, of course, the first topic, as you have seen, is the issue making the round. I mean, it started over the weekend, and a number of people are wondering what in the universe is happening. Uh, this whole USSD, uh, POS, transactions, charges, and all of that. But the one that concerns a lot more people, at least 175 million subscribers, at least subscriber numbers in Nigeria, is that of the USSD charges. And uh, to weigh in on that conversation this morning is the President of the Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria, ATCON, Mr. Olushola Teniola. He joins us via phone. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Teniola Olushola. What is your take on all of this that's making the rounds? Good morning. Yes, good morning, and thanks for joining us. So, what's what's your take? What's what's going on? You know, between the especially concerning this USSD thing. What's your take? Well, I heard a bit that the CBN governor shared with the media, and with all due respect to the CBN governor, he is wrong when he says that the USSD uh, platform is a sunk cost and that the bank needs to patronize telecom operators that can give it at almost zero cost. Uh, the USSD platform is a legacy platform that enables more than 75% of the 175 million subscribers on the GSM network to have access to basic data. As you know, this technology is used by the GSM operators to allow infotainment, general information, during social sessions for free. Now, the banking sector has deliberately used this platform to make billions of naira by charging the consumers who want to need access to their bank account at rates that are not allowing the financial inclusion to increase. But as you know, there's been a huge backlash from consumers that the cost of accessing their accounts is exorbitant. And therefore, the Honorable Minister has decided to allow status quo to remain. However, until the Honorable Minister of Communications is able to get to the bottom of this, the status quo isn't solving the problem because the costs applied per USSD session by the bank is unfair. And those costs need to be reduced so that the financial inclusion that we are trying to realize in Nigeria can increase. And this is purely in the arms of the bank, because, as you know, the USSD platform is an infrastructure that needs to be paid for. It is an infrastructure that is being used by a majority of those that have basic feature phones, and it will require investments to not only increase its capacity to enable that to continue, but also the coverage. So, really, it is a dialogue that needs to happen in between both the CBN governor, the bankers, NCC, and the mobile operators to ensure that this status quo is actually moved on. Because we're okay. in a sort of an impasse at the moment. All right, Mr. Teniola, I'd like us to backtrack a bit and, uh, you know, probe into how this came into being in the first place. So whose idea was it to introduce these charges in the first place? Is it the telecoms or the banks? Mr. Tenny Life, you can hear me. Yes, it was the bank. Remember that there is a cost to actually providing this service. Those costs are borne by the bank. They have it has to be borne by the banks because over and beyond what the USSD platform was built for, and remember that usually the USSD platform is on net, i.e., is connected to your service provider's network, 
and not interoperable across different networks. So the, the mere fact that the USSD platform is being extended and used in manners and ways that it wasn't originally designed and built for suggests that the banks are the ones that need to carry that cost to enable but, uh, their clients and subscribers or consumers to access their bank accounts via the mobile phone. Okay. Now, this cost is determined and it depends on which operators they go to. However, we can't have a situation where banks are not actually uh, charging at just at cost recovery level. They're doing cost recovery plus a margin. That margin is excessive. That margin is what's causing consumers to complain, and that margin has to come down. We can't have bankers using this platform to generate non-interest income when they should be focusing on giving out loans to SMEs. Okay, now I, I get that, Mr. Teniola. Now, I understand that, but I'm looking at a report in uh, the Daily Independent this morning uh, from the Committee of Banks, the chief executive officers uh, in Nigeria. Actually, they, they put out a statement saying that we wish to state as follows, that the banks did not ask, they mentioned, you know, the, telcos, uh, the telco company to start charging customers as contained in the text message. So you say this came from the banks, but apparently the Committee of Bankers are saying we didn't ask you to start charging. So where are we right now? There are different ways of actually charging uh, a consumer. But what we can't have is double charging. Um, the issue that the uh, banker has stated is not a scenario that plays out and should not play out. Um, prior to the determination of the legal uh, legal determination of the USAC price that was approved and ratified by not only the bankers but the mobile operators and VAS operators in uh, 23rd of July 2019, it was agreed that the costs that were determined, and obviously um, my members were not happy with the actual consultancy work that came into that, that determined a cost that was actually below their costs. Um, and we also know that NCC was trying to resolve the issue by intervening to ensure that there was financial inclusion, uh, and especially that we know that technology is moving on, and this is not the only way to access those that are financially uh, disenfranchised. It is paramount to state that the charges that are applied to the consumers is done by the bank and not by the telcos. So there has to be a realization from the banking, uh, the banking community that the telcos have every right to recover their costs. The banks you know, have every right to cover, recover their costs. So simply stating that the bank refused the telcos to uh, not recover their costs is simply not acceptable in any, in any normal society. Mr. The, Teniola, it, it is... The it is... assets are owned by the telcos. The assets are owned by the telcos. And it's for the bankers to realize that this is the only way to actually get financial inclusion into uh, the country. There are other protocols and other ways to do this. So FinTech is another way that they can access these customers. Using what? smartphones is another way where you use your mobile application. And you're not used on the USSD platform. So... The bankers have to realize that the technology itself cannot be controlled by them, and therefore there is a need for them to have a meeting where they can ratify the cost that they are trying to push onto the consumers that is just a cost recovery and not cost recovery plus a significant margin. Are you saying, Mr. Teniola, that the telecom company has the right to, in, to, to impose a USSD cost on the consumer without taking permission from anyone. Is that what you're saying? I realize that the signal is, is a bit weak. Now, if I hear what you're saying, the, the, the telecoms operators are regulated by NCC. Tariffs and charges are defined by NCC. The legal determination for the USSD pricing was approved by the NCC to be enforced from the 1st of September. 
where there is a floor price, a ceiling price, and a cost. The cost that the telcos, who are my members, were trying to, to actually establish and execute within those parameters. So the telcos have determined the cost and have put on a margin within the range that was determined by NCC. And that is therefore demonstrate that they were right to actually try and recover their costs. What is needed is that you cannot double bill a client or a consumer on any transaction, even whether it's POS, USSD, using SIP, using any other protocol, if you're accessing a mobile device. So therefore, the interoperability of this infrastructure and this ecosystem has to work through continuous trusted partnership and, and collaboration and dialogue to ensure that the consumer is priced or given a price that reflects the reality of the users and not some arbitrary figure that the bankers want to impose on the consumers so they can increase their non-interest rate income, which is in the range of billions of Naira right now. So uh, just to be clear, have the telcos suspended the charges right now? Or is, is it something you're planning to negotiate or have a dialogue and then reintroduce it in perhaps a few weeks to come? The, re, the reality is that the telcos are law-abiding citizens, and they have suspended, as instructed by them, by the ministry, Minister of Communication and NCC, to suspend for now until the Minister of Communication is able to ratify and have a dialogue with the CBN governor, with the bankers, and with the MNOs to move this issue forward. As I stated in the beginning of this call, there's an impasse, there's a status quo that still remains, but it does not solve the problem. But I, I'd just like to point out now that with this new, I mean, charge, you, you say that financial inclusion is a big deal uh, you know, for the telecom sector, and you're hoping that you get more people involved in the banking sector, at least be financially included. So don't you think this will deter in some way this financial inclusion goal that we're trying to achieve? If, if the bankers are not able to realize that financial inclusion is about the unbanked, and I think they realize that. And there are other ways to get to the unbanked. Then these consumers that already have bank accounts with them are going to be excluded from using their mobile devices if the charges are exorbitant. The issue that we have is that technologically, and the technology resides in the mobile network platforms, there are ways to access these mobile devices, which are predominantly 2G, with the unbanked community in many other ways. The USSD platform is just one way and method of doing this. There are other ways. So I find it quite ironic that the CBN institution itself is trying to update interfaces in between the telcos and the banks using a CBN framework when technology is very dynamic, and there are many ways to actually access the devices. So the USSD part is just one part of the story. There are other ways, as I've stated, that you can access your banking services. There are other ways of providing banking services through mobile money, mobile wallets, etc. So I think this issue is really, in my opinion, a storm in the teacup. There has to be a realization from the banking community that technology has moved on. And the USSD platform itself is a legacy platform. It is about, it's about charges. Usually, USSD is free. And therefore, there should be no reason why banks are charging consumers. That's the reality. Banks do not need to charge consumers.
to access the, the bank accounts through USDC platform. Okay, well then, so maybe that is uh, what we would want uh, to suggest, you know, because I mean, already uh, from one of your members, you know, was quoted as saying that banks still charge 50 Naira per transaction, yet the banks do not own the USSD platforms that enables the transactions. And so why not negotiate, you know, that, you know, uh, collaboration, so to speak, such that both costs are embedded in that 50 Naira that the, every, the average consumer is charged by, by use of the USSD platform, rather than charge them extra? I, I, believe, I believe that the 50 Naira you're referring to is on top of whether you're using an SMS or a USSD, or any other interface when you're transacting with the bank. I also uh, am a victim of this 50 Naira uh, per transaction ch uh, charge on uh, my mobile application that I use. I can't understand why 50 Naira is being deducted. It doesn't cover the cost of my data that I use, which I paid for myself, and therefore, if it's an internet application, I should not be paying any extra charge. So that 50 Naira is, a, is not part of this discussion because, as you know, ATM machines, the banks charge you for uh, if you go over a certain number of transactions. So there seems to be, within the banking community, this desire or need to be able to extract the maximum amount of money from technology adoption, irrespective of whether it's USSD, irrespective of whether they, you're using your mobile device. You know, so I have a problem with the thinking behind their, their decisions because technology will always evolve and we can't always be taxing the technology. I see it as a form of charge that should be dropped by the banking community. There shouldn't be a charge of 50 Naira per transaction that I'm uh, actually uh, using to access my own money. There should be another way of incentivizing and, and uh, encouraging the bankers to find other ways of making money and not based on the evolution of technology. So the 50 Naira, to me, that is the question really you should really get to get a breakdown from the, from the banking community why 50 Naira is being applied because there's a separate figure applied for SMS, which I believe is for Naira, and I definitely there's a similar one for USSD, um, and I'm sure there are others, like an ATM, they charge 65 Naira. So these additional charges, when you look at the balance sheet and the profit, the profit and loss sheet of the banks, you can tend to find that this is a rising income for the bank. And therefore, in my opinion, it doesn't give them any incentive to now uh, use their loan facilities to the needed SMEs, which are millions, to actually generate income, but they rather take income from non-interest rate income, and this is under non-interest rate income. Okay, now, Mr. Tenela, why now that this, the Minister of uh, Communication has said that uh, this cost should be suspended for now, what should we be expecting from your members, you know, in the... Uh, on the other side of this whole conversation, between you, the banks, the regulator, the Ministry of Communications, and all of that? Well, you, 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 you alluded to it by stating that the charges that the banks are currently imposing on consumers should be shared. Well, we need to have a discussion around the whole composition of the margin applied above the cost recovery that the banks are actually applying to the consumers. And this has to be done in a transparent and open manner. As I mentioned before, it can only, this will only work through honest partnership and true collaboration. Otherwise, we're going to get into this situation going forward when another technology comes up. And I understand the tensions in between the, whether the financial inclusion should, in, should be bank-led or whether it should be telco-led. If you look at other jurisdictions, this is very obvious that in Nigeria, we do not have a fixed line community. We don't have fixed lines. So the mobile device is the single most ubiquitous access to any digital service. We are in the realm of digital services. The bank needs to transform themselves into digital services, but not use it as an opportunity to fleece customers. 
All right. So, you know, when this announcement, when people got this SMS over the weekend, it was like a major tipping of the balance because they had to grapple with issues of quality of service, high cost of data. You know, I can go on and on. And they're like, so is this the next thing we're meant to grapple with? So the question is, while this conversation about the USSD is going on, on one hand, are you also having that conversation about improving quality of service, cost of data, such that people actually get to use the data they paid for, not that they think, oh, I bought five gigs and I mean, it ended, uh, I mean, I used it up tomorrow. So how are you having that conversation? Yeah, thanks for the, for, thanks for the uh, question. The USSD doesn't use data. That's the first thing I would like to share with the uh, audience today and your viewers. USSD is a peer-to-peer -peer relationship in between your network provider and the mobile device. So it's no, no, data. definitely. Now, this question is about the, wider question the quality of service. It is an interesting one. And that yeah. really is about usage and the profiling and the applications you have on your, your device. So I and we, as Adcon, are always looking for a conducive environment to ensure that network infrastructure is not tampered with, that it becomes critical national, uh, critical national and infrastructure so that the destruction of our facilities are stopped and that they're not destroyed. Multiplication is another issue, and we talked about the communication services tax on your program at 9% that's been bought only two weeks ago. So there's this, there's this environment that we've got to unravel to ensure that if we are using models that assumes an efficient operator, that the environment is close to being efficient. Otherwise, there's a discord in between the reality and what we're trying to achieve. So we are also consumers as operators. We're also consumers and using uh, data. And we realize that the price of data will eventually go down if we have a conducive environment. All right, then. It's a very wonderful place to leave it, Mr. Teniola, Ulushola Teniola is president, Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria, ATCON, joined us over the phone. Thank you so much for joining us for that Thank conversation. You. Been very, very elucidating.